Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Change Bible Study. We're talking about standing versus experience. Um, where we are versus how we are going, okay? Now, that's how we want to term these two ideas in the scriptures that the gospel teaches us of justification and sanctification. I don't want to say verses because I don't want to make them oppose, but we do have to put them in their right order and to understand their right function. Now remember, we already studied from the previous lesson, Acts 13, if you've watched this before, take the time to do that. I'll put a link below to that study so that you can see that, how all of us can be and have been through Jesus Christ forgiven of all of the sins that we have, are, and will commit. That's the power of the gospel. And those who believe in it will accept Christ's righteousness and be justified. Now, another verse to help us to understand justification is in Colossians chapter 2. Turn there with me. Now, look at Colossians chapter 2. This is probably one of the best definitions of what it means to be justified. Colossians 2.10 says, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Christ. That is our standing. That is our status. That is who we are in Christ. And we are complete. In fact, you want to know another word for that word complete that's used in the scriptures? The word perfect. Not word perfect. I'm talking about the word perfect. We are perfect in Christ. Our standing is complete. In other words, when the Father looks at our record as his wayward children, when we accept what he has offered through Christ, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, he doesn't see us anymore. He sees what Christ has done, and he can't see what you and I have done. That is our standing. That's our status. Think of it like a driver's license. You know you have a driver's license. Your license is your status that you are a legal driver. You've passed a test or an exam of some sort. Well, when it comes to salvation, Christ is the one who's passed the test and the Father has given us his license with our name on it. Now, let's look at sanctification. After you have been justified, the next moment, and every moment thereafter, because you've been justified, you are walking in sanctification. One is your standing. Now the walk is your experience. Let's get some Bible just to verify that. And that's in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 is probably one of the best scriptures to help us to understand sanctification. This says that I am crucified with Christ. Now, when I'm crucified, when my standing is in Christ, look at all that results. Look at what happens. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The old man dies, not literally, but spiritually, that old man dies and now a new man, a new spiritual man, a new spiritual woman, a new spiritual person lives on. That life, that walk, that experience is sanctification. In Christ, at the very beginning of that verse, but then now leading into what? Your experience. So now remember the driver's license? How the driver's license gives you your status to say, I am legal. I am able to drive in this state. Well, actually, I can drive anywhere in this country if you're watching this in the US. But now, when you get that license, and most of y'all got your license when you were young, in your teenage years, 17, maybe 16, 18, what have you. If you can remember that far back, <laughs> do you drive like you drove the day you got your license? Hopefully not, probably not. Because now you have what? Experience. And your experience after you got your license, you perfected the ability to drive. You got safer at your driving and you got wiser at your driving. 
but you did not know and you couldn't even do what you did or do now back at 17, 16, or 18 when you got that license. It's the same thing with us as believers. The moment we say yes to Jesus, we receive his license. We get credited with his righteousness and we are forgiven of our sins. But in the next moment, just like from the moment you got that license printed, they don't stand there and print you license after license after license. You don't camp out at the DMV. You don't go back and forth to the DMV. Once you've said yes to his righteousness, now you spend the rest of your days on this earth walking in that righteousness, walking in that path. Are there times when you maybe went another way? Are there times when we leave the path? Were there times as a driver when you got a ticket? Were there times as a driver that you got in an accident? Yes, and probably yes, unfortunately. But again, all extenuating circumstances aside, did you lose the license? Did you lose the opportunity? No, you were a licensed driver who had an accident. And because you still had a license, you were still able to what? Drive another day because you had a license. Now, the moment you lose your license, no more wheels, no more movement, no more driving. That is possible, but that's another study. And that only happens when we simply say no to his righteousness. No, I don't want you to cover my sins. I want to deal with them myself. And the only way we'll have to deal with them ourselves is to pay for them ourselves. That's our choice. But if not, we've got the other side of that choice. And that's to accept your standing in Christ and recognize that he's given you a license to drive. He's given you a license to live. And because of that license, you can grow. You can go forward. You can, even though you might remember your past, you don't have to be relegated to that past. Even though you might see some of the things that you've done, you can see beyond those things and see the grace of God on your life and live and walk in what we call sanctification, what we call victory, what we call growth. But it only starts when we start in the love of God and the power of God in our lives from day one to day two to day forever. That's the opportunity that we have now. And that is to walk in, to drive in God's love, walk in the gift of his grace. And when we believe, we will. The Bible says we have overcome. No, okay, that's not. The point of this study is that we would understand the difference between our standing and our experience. One does not dictate the other. In the, okay. The important point of this study is that you understand that your standing in Christ is totally different than your experience in Christ. And many people are doubting their standing in Christ because they're judging their walk by their experience. You can't judge the power of your walk by what you have done, even by what you do. You've got to base your faith on what Christ has done. And then and only then, when we believe in what he has done, will we truly live and grow and walk as he walked. Because it's not us anymore. It's Christ in us doing the walking.